Alaska Insight is supported in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by viewers just like you. Thank you. Alaska Pacific University in Anchorage is moving toward becoming a tribal university in partnership with the Alaska Native Tribal Health Consortium. Tonight on Alaska Insight, we'll meet APU's Elder Artists in Residence to learn about their work teaching art, culture, and tradition in a university setting. Good evening. Tonight on Alaska Insight, we're exploring what it means for Joe and Martha Sanungatuck to be artists and elders in residence. Alaska Public Media's Wesley Early visited classes the APU elders were teaching and brings us this story. Since late 2016, Alaska Pacific University has been transitioning from a small liberal arts college to a tribal university. They began a partnership with the Alaska Native Tribal Health Consortium, and their first step was creating an Elders in Residence program to help teach and facilitate Alaska Native art. Elders Joe and Martha Sanungatuk have been using a format taught to them by Maori people in New Zealand to help get the program going. And they said, first of all, find, you know, some elders to help you and um, come up with a vision that uh, is based on your artwork, your language, your culture. The first class is a wood carving course, where students of both native and non-native backgrounds are making traditional feast dishes. They're using basic tools to slowly etch away at their creations. Martha says she prefers using more traditional methods. I think it's more, more satisfying for myself anyway, just to use hand tools. Because then, because the power tool is, you know, can get away from you. While Martha has a background in painting, Joe has been a carver for decades. It's an art form he's been teaching to young Native people across the state, beginning in King Village near his hometown of Wales. The elders in the village wanted to help guide their youth away from crime and mischief. And the, and the elder said, we don't want to learn anything new. We know how to carve ivory and we know how to make our own tools and we know how to do whatever you consider art. Um, so go teach the young people, they're just doing nothing uh, and causing trouble in their homes and in school. Native art has been practiced for thousands of years. Contemporary artists like Joe and Martha are trying to move away from making art similar to what their ancestors might have done and instead create Native art for modern times. Martha says it works as a way to connect with the history of their people while forging something new. When you have a sharp carving tool in your hand and it's sliding right through that red cedar and you're not, you know, you're not thinking about anything. I think that, um, you know, it, you're not very far away from where your heart is happy and you're, you're glad for what you're trying to accomplish. Joe echoed that sentiment, stating that he feels euphoric when he's chipping away at the wood, carving his creations. I cannot describe where art comes from, but I know it comes from the heart because when I do it uh, and it pleases me what I'm doing, um, I'm, like Martha says earlier, I'm, I'm happy. I'm thrilled, actually. And I don't know, I, I can't express in words what that feels like. Joe and Martha hope that they'll be able to teach about the history of Alaska Native art and also empower their students to interpret their culture in their own way, crafting and molding a new contemporary Native art form and they'll put those feast dishes to good use at a banquet at the end of the course. Artists and Alaska Pacific University artist elders in residence, Joe and Martha Sanungatuck, join me now. Hello. Hello. 
Thanks so much for being here, both of you. Thank you very Thank much. You. So how did this initially come about, you being uh, brought in as artist elders in residence at Alaska Pacific University? Um, the university is making a move toward becoming a tribal university, and you were the artist elders in residence last fall, and you are again now. So how did this come about? Actually, we were pla planning to attend a coffee little meeting with um, uh, our friend uh, Justin Wilson. He was scheduled in his activities to be part of a larger gathering or meeting at APU to discuss um, how to go for the First Alaskans Institute to come in and offer um, suggestions to the uh, administration there, and we didn't know, uh, I didn't know about it. And um, my only hope was to see our friend Justin. And um, then it turned out that uh, Vicki Hike Steer wanted me to meet the president of uh, APU um, to just get acquainted with him. And I told him during that gathering that I actually had begun a work, a piece of uh, art to become uh, APU's ceremonial mace for their graduation events and so on. And that I had quit working on it many years ago and that following administrations had come and gone since that time and that I was still open to uh, finishing that base one of these days and I still have that <laughs> that um, project to do. He, I, I he's can. still working on it's it. It's still a work in, in progress. In, in the studio, yeah. And uh, someone that uh, sold us the red cedar that was from Thorn Bay for our feast dish uh, class, he gave Joe a black spruce with a lot of burls on it. So he's working on that that for the mace with uh, one of our students. The First Alaskans uh, Foundation actually invited some people from New Zealand to come up and talk about how their programs were initiated, uh, the Maori. And uh, one of the things they told uh, Dr. Anders was that the uh, president of Alaska the Pacific president University, of Robert of, uh, Anders of APU was that the to bring the elders in and to uh, have language and art taught a, as part of the curriculum so we were there just to visit Wilson Justin and uh, he he asked us to come to APU because he was invited to this event and as one of their elders that uh, the Maori would meet with. So on a, on a break, we talked with him and then Vicki Hike Steer, who teaches uh, native governance and environmental justice at APU, uh, she introduced Joe to Dr. Anders and uh, they talked about a mace that uh, uh, Joe had promised to make and is now making in, in the studio, in the uh, Hearts Healing Studio. The, the students that are coming into the studio and working with you, are they interested in learning very traditional methods or do they want to um, maybe look at the work that you've done. We'll talk about the mass, those beautiful mass that you've brought here in a moment, but do they want to look at the, the, the traditional work and then use that to kind of a, as a springboard for their own contemporary interpretations? And how do you see that, that changing of, of tradition and culture as, as you're making art? In order to begin a project, everybody needs an idea uh, and inspiration to begin something. And uh, for our classes that we teach in carving, we 
have on hand um, various museum and gallery collections of art, native art around the United States and uh, hopefully soon we'll have a library of um, artifacts and artworks by earlier peoples uh, who have lived in the United States, what is now considered the United States. And um, there um, is a kind of a fundamental uh, lesson to be learned in knowing about your past, the, your culture's past. And that to us is a wonderful way to introduce to the students where they might be from or where they, the world's uh, collection of native art is primarily being held in great museums and great world's capitals uh, around the world. And um, that to me is also a good uh, way to start any project for me is I, I yearn to look at my people's past works and I learn from that, from the photographs and from the collections that we did original works way early on. And uh, recently I, I uh, looked at a book that features the cave paintings of somewhere in France that show early man doing early works. Uh, and to me that is like a Bible um, of what man can do in his earlier cultural life. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of the work that you have done and, and the mass that you brought today, uh, this evening for us to look at. Uh, one of them that's over there in front of uh, Martha is a mass that you've carved, Joe. Tell us about the style of that carving and where it's destined for. Um, that is an example of earlier works done by the Utqiagvik um, peoples a long time ago, before the whaling ships came. There was a culture there that celebrated whale hunting in its uh, native forms uh, way early on. I look at a football field to for me to compare the yardage of a football field and how, how long, um, it's, let's say 20,000 years of native existence in uh, the new so-called new world um, is the whole entire length of the football field. And the United States as a country started somewhere around 200 some years ago. And to me, that ends up being like the first 16 inches of a fo football field. And of course, it's going to have a long lifespan of its own, of a government, of a nation. It's going to travel 20,000 years or more uh, like the Native people have up to now. Mm -hmm. And we are survivors of that kind of span of life, of existence. in our people's worlds. And so this mask that you've carved is in that tradition of the Utqiagvik people? Yes. Um, it, it, I, I don't copy other people's works. Uh, in fact, I, I think it's a shame to copy one's own work. One, my own work, if I do something, I know that it belongs in the 19. 40s, 1950s, 1960s, on up to now. And I have a line of work that um, is uh, in somebody's collection. And uh, I can tell from that piece when I thought of it and when I did it and what uh, things going on in my life then were. So it's kind of like jotting down a little piece of history for me. Mm -hmm. So we're at this time we're starting to buy back Joe's artwork, <laughs> uh, in in hopes of having as many pieces as we can because we just enjoy being around 
your own those, history. Yeah. Yes. And and that mask is bound for Estonia, is that right? That's correct. Um, I have an archaeologist friend living there now, but he's lived in the Canadian Arctic for uh, quite a few seasons or years uh, in pursuing his doctorate uh, of uh, Inupiaq life in the far north of Canada. And he became my friend when he was one of the curators of a, a folk art museum in Munich. Uh, that's when I first met him. He was, he is a French man and he first married into a, a German family there uh, in, around Munich and um, he and he, then his wife um, uh, journeyed to the Canadian Arctic for a good part of their life. And his um, specialty was learning more about the Inupiaq harpoon. We saw um, him and his wife a few years ago, so they commissioned this piece for Joe to And now they're to in do. Estonia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you, Martha, this mask uh, that's laying down, if you would hold that up, that's one that you've been working on. Yes. Uh, tell us about what this represents to you and, and how that project came about. Well, as Joe said, we, uh, we have a lot of books um, that are usually catalogs from museums of different, uh, maybe Yupik artwork or Unangas artwork, Aleut, or uh, Klinget, and uh, also um, just every tribe from around the state of Alaska and the states in the uh, United States of America. So what we do is um, ask our students to, to look in the books and get inspired by perhaps something that they see within the books, whether they're native or non-native, just to see. Whatever speaks to them. Yes, right. And this, this mask uh, came from a book and uh, it, was, it was from Anga. And that's where my grandmother came from. She was born in Anga. Her name was Anna Serkovikov. And uh, she was raised in, in uh, Anga until her father passed away. And, and uh, her mother was still alive, but um, uh, she went to live in the Jesse Lee home. Mm. And so myself, I have never gone to Anga, which I, I really hope to do. But every time I see my father's artwork or uh, Unanga's person that does artwork, I, I yearn for that. I yearn for that uh, ability. And as Joe was teaching us art and carving, I decided to carve this mask. And, uh, and I, as I was mentioning earlier in the broadcast, you had a talk of Alaska. Uh, when I was carving this mask, I um, had in mind that it would be for the Atka dancers of uh, Atka, Atka Unangas dancers, it, because they have taught me so much about my own culture. And we were there at the elders uh, youth conference yesterday and ran into Moses Dirks, who is, uh, wrote the book on Unangas language. And we uh, sort of uh, said, what are you doing? And he said he'd be at this workshop. So we went. And I was so excited because um, people from all over the chain uh, were there. And I was amongst my people um, maybe for the first time, you know, and I felt very privileged and honored to be amongst um, the Unangas people. And, uh, and, and a similar thing happened to me when I carved this mask. When I finally got to the eyes, I, I started carving the eyes, which I'm not finished with, but um, they, they really spoke to me. The eyes spoke to me and, and sort of told me things about myself that I didn't realize <laughs> before. And it was a very moving experience. And so I, I, believe that there's a healing process that comes when, when you get in touch with 
your tribe, you know, where whatever tribe that might be. It could be Irish or Scottish or which I am on my mother's side, Barbara Hoover. And on my father's side, uh, Dr. John J. Hoover, I am um, Unangas from Anga. <laughs> so this is kind of full circle for you to reconnect to your, your heritage and also to express that through art. Joe, you're also a writer. Yes. And um, how, how do you see the art of writing kind of creating art with your mind through words as opposed to the physical nature of carving and, and creating physical art? Writing to me is an art form that uh, begins in somebody's inspiration to write a play, a book, a history book, a art book, or whatever turns them on, turns their readers on. Um, that's the first step to what I believe is creative writing, um, as well as doing creative art. Um, the beginning of a dance mask, for instance, was not a the ultimate purpose of a dance mask, ceremonial dance mask before was not to stand or sit in some display case or in the antiques road shows program, which of course they are, that's where they have been regulated, relegated to uh, for people to see and appreciate. And th that's enough for me now to be a reason why I am um, given the challenge of creating um, ceremonial dance masks. Of course, the original uh, purpose of them were to give birth to an idea, uh, to a dance, to a ceremony that would uh, celebrate a new life, a new beginning, a or maybe the opposite, the, a death or in the family. Or they were also. Um, pictorial books in a way, after a fashion, and people learned from them. And um, then in my early childhood, uh, rearing um, uh, and getting a Western style education, I knew that books were important and that we were given the Dick, Jane, and Sally school books in order to learn English, for instance, and um, the um, books that I like reading now uh, are more um, in the line of uh, history books. Mm. Uh, I'm interested in man's always progressing on to a new century, a new period, a new time, and we believe in the passage of time to be that given by our Creator, our God, our spiritual, uh, whoever it is that governs our lives today, um, His um, creation was us uh, in the beginning. And um, He's not done with us yet, I don't believe, but uh, <laughs> um, that um, we should appreciate him as the reason for continuing on having a good life. And um, having a good life for a Native artist today is to appreciate works wh which were done quite a while, long while ago. And some of them, I understand, have been burned uh, mm. ceremonially, and that when they were done with a story, they were uh, given a proper ending, uh, a, a proper beginning when it first started. And um, nowadays, it's different, of course. I, we only, we have less than a minute left, and I wanted to get to, I know that you've got some future events coming mm -hmm. up, and Martha, could you, in just a few seconds, tell us about what's coming up uh, in the program? Well, uh, Winona LaDuke is coming, um, Winona LaDuke is an indigenous author, activist, and uh, economist, 
Ojibwe Anishinaabe. Yeah, yep. she's an environmentalist and uh, she's coming to our state. So she'll be here in November. Eighth Winona and is a, a, an amazing speaker. Mm -hmm. I've I've heard her many times from the White Earth Reservation, and um, that will be in November. Thank you so much to both of you for being here today and bringing your work and, and um, being on to talk a little bit about the Artist Elders in Residence program. I so appreciate it. And your I appreciate you too, Lori. Thank you so I much wanna, for this. I want you to have something that Joe wrote back in the 70s and, and he's working on rewriting it. So we want Thank you to you. have that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate You're the very gift. You're welcome. Yes. Thank you for this time. <laughs> It's clear that Joe and Martha Sanungatuck care deeply about art and nurturing the growth of creative ideas in other artists. Their concern for maintaining culture, tradition, and history is balanced by their appreciation and encouragement of younger artists to create their own modern interpretations of culture and identity. Each week on Alaska Insight, Alaska Public Media goes into the community to go beyond the headlines and provide perspective on the issues that have Alaskans talking. You can watch past episodes of Alaska Insight online at alaskapublic.org slash alaskainsight or stream them on AK Passport. You can also engage with us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Your comments will help us determine future topics of discussion. In the meantime, stay informed and connected by listening to your locally owned and operated public radio station. Thanks for joining Alaska Public Media for this edition of Alaska Insight. I'm Lori Townsend. Good night.